why? Why build this? Thank you, Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and most welcome guests. <clears throat> Ever since I first moved to Massachusetts 15 years ago, I have reveled in the Christmas tree that Halifax sends us every year. I love to see her lit up in all her beautiful splendor. I love the celebrations. I love the connection that she brings between Halifax and Boston. On December 6, 1917, a munitions ship exploded in Halifax Harbor, leveling the town and killing 2,000 people. Within 10 hours, Boston medical crews were on a train headed north, not even knowing exactly what had happened. I admired those people so much who dropped everything to rush to the aid of others. I wonder if I was the kind of person who would do that. And then I realized I don't want to be the kind of person who would do that. I want to be the person who did do that. In September 2017, Hurricane Irma hit Florida. My friend, Pastor to Governor Paul White, groused on Facebook that the government wasn't doing enough. Being a little bit of a radical, I said the only thing, way that anything was going to happen is if we rented an RV, borrowed some power tools, and drove down there ourselves. Paul thought this was a great idea. Inasmuch as he was recovering from open heart surgery, I realized that he would not be the best companion. However, I have been involved in hundreds of marches and strikes and sit-ins. I know thousands of activists. My <clears throat> very leftist friends have arranged me numerous times about how we must support the people on the front lines of climate change. But when I said, let's go, they said, send a postcard. I was frustrated. And then somebody <coughs> said, call these people. I'd never heard of them, but they said that if I showed up in Naples, Florida, they would supply me with a cool orange t-shirt, power tools, and all the Gatorade I could drink. For a week, I worked next to a hundred other people, turning houses that looked like this to houses that looked like this. The important thing about this house is that there is no mold. These are the poorest homers in Naples. They cannot afford a hotel room. They have to go to work. So they sleep in their house, and the mold grows in the walls and in their lungs. These homeowners have an enormous amount of work to do to rebuild their house. But they will succeed. They will not lose their health. They will not lose their house. Samaritan's First is a religious organization founded by Billy Graham. Its purpose is to bring people to Christ through good works. So every time we worked on a house, we presented them to the Bible and we prayed with them. As you can imagine, we ourselves did a heap of praying. We prayed before breakfast, we prayed after breakfast. We made our plans for the day, we prayed about that. We went out to the trucks, we divided up into teams, we loaded up the equipment, got into a great big circle and prayed one more time and then we headed out. It was a mess. It was hot, it was humid, there was a pervasive stench of things rotting everywhere. And yet everyone was enthusiastic and happy and excited and eager to get to work. This being a really great organization, both of the people were fairly conservative. I might have been the only person there who didn't vote for Donald Trump. Nonetheless, I did not see any men telling any women what they could or could not do. <clears throat> 95 degrees, pouring sweat, the drywall would cake on our arms, on our faces, get in our ears. You know it was time to change your mask when you were breathing like this. <laughs> We downed gallons of Gatorade. Did, did you know if you put enough blue liquid in the top end that... <laughs> <laughs> I was fortunate to be assigned to work with a group from the Bible Church at Port St. Lucie. 
we bonded. When you work and suffer and sweat next to someone long enough, you tend to build respect for them. And this is what I want for my very leftist friends. I want them to work cheek and jowl with the Republicans on something they both care about and talk. I believe that this is the most radical political statement a person can possibly do. After work, we would relax, get back, play football, ping pong, card games. We'd laugh, we'd talk, we'd eat. We'd testify about all the people who opened their hearts to Jesus that day. We'd pray some more. 10.30, it was lights out. I would get into my RV and drive to the one place in Naples where I could park overnight. Curl up, pretend to sleep. 6 a.m., do it again. I was exhausted, but I was so happy. Our support team had six big rigs. They included equipment, supplies, a kitchen, showers, and tiny rooms for the long-term staff. Samaritan's Purse has three such support teams in the United States, all of which were in Houston for Hurricane Harvey. Our support team came from the Maritimes. Kevin here is actually from Halifax. I was so excited, I thought it was so beautiful. Boston and Halifax, Massachusetts and Maritimes working together to help people. Is melodramatic am I being? Yes, but it's so worth it. Now it's for the tree. I love the tree. reminds us that we're indeed the same, that our people have cared about each other for pretty much forever. I thank Halifax for the tree. I love the people of the Maritimes because they are the ones who helped us when we were in need. And as for why, why will pe people put so much time and effort and money into helping others? Why will they risk their own lives to help people that they have never met, have never seen, and will never see again? Why? because that's what people do.